Hi folks, I thought it was about time for an uh, actual live calculation. So I've been looking at Bourne Harbour Cycles and uh, Lattice Energy in Lessons. So I thought I'd actually build uh, a Bourne Harbour Cycle for a pretty simple ionic solid um, and then use the cycle to work out the lattice enthalpy of, well, we're looking here, potassium iodide. Okay, so we'll build up the cycle together. I'll draw it and then we'll try and do the calculation. I've got the, the, the figures as well. I've not... Um, written them into the question first of all but let's see so for me you've always got to start the Bourne Harbour cycle with the elements in their standard state so we've got K solid plus a half I2 because it's Ki element in its standard state iodine is I2 solid okay so we just need half of that okay then we need a nice little line there we go um, then take it down doesn't matter how far you go down, but let's go down to the ionic compound. Here we go. So I'll draw a line right across because that's going to be the other side of the cycle up here. So we've got the uh, the Ki solid. That's my ionic solid. So this is the enthalpy change of formation. If you remember the definition, enthalpy change of formation for potassium iodide is to form one mole of the potassium iodide from the elements in their standard states okay so we're going to build up the other side of the cycle now so first always remember in a cycle we go uh, atomization we go um, ionization then electron affinity so we're going to atomize this first so we've got uh, delta H standard atomization we'll do the K first is usually the metal we do first uh, so that's going to take it to K gas plus a half I2. Still gas, um, sorry, still solid. Okay. Then next, we're going to take the I2 and we're going to atomize that. So we're going to turn it not just from iodine molecules into iodine atoms, but from a solid into a gas. So that's delta H standard optimization for I2 okay or in fact half I2 sorry if that's a little bit small on the on the uh, video there might just move that across so we can still see everything okay um, okay so that takes us up to the next level we got K gas plus I gas okay so we've atomized everything so we do in our um, order we've got atomization ionization electron affinity so ionization next ionization is removing one electron so the first ionization energy is to make our positive ion the positive ion needs to be potassium in this case so it goes to k plus um, some people write the electrons into their cycles. I don't actually, um, but you can choose to do that if you wish. So this is delta H standard ionization energy one for potassium. Okay, so it changes it to K plus plus I gas. Okay, so we've done uh, atomization, ionization, electron affinity is adding electrons. So Adding electrons are into the iodine in this case. So we're going to have K plus gas plus I minus gas, and that is delta H standard Ea1 for our iodine. Okay, so now we've got our uh, ions in their gaseous state. This final change is, as we know, hopefully already, delta H lat. Okay, so okay then. So now we need to put our figures in for this. Um, before I write the whole expression, I'll actually put some of the figures in so I know and I know where they're going to go. Um, for example, I know that this enthalpy change of formation is minus 
0.328 kilojoules per mole. I won't put all the kilojoules per mole in. Um, I know that the atomization of potassium is plus 90. I know that the iodine is plus 107. I know that the first ionization energy of potassium is plus 418. Uh, I know that the electron affinity is minus 314. Okay, that's all of the numbers. So our question mark, our unknown, is the delta H lat, the lattice energy. Change the color again. So we've got all of the numbers in there. This should make the uh, calculation relatively easy. So we've got delta H lat. That's what we want to find. So that's the energy change from here to here. That means that if I go, the energy change from here to here is exactly the same as going all the way this way around the cycle. Okay, that's what Hess's law says. It's conservation of energy. Yeah, the enthalpy change is exactly the same no matter which route we take. So this is just taking a different route to produce exactly the same thing. Okay, so we need, now anytime we go against the arrow, we change the sign. So minus delta H. EA. I'll try and abbreviate them, keep it short. Minus, because we're against the arrow again, delta H standard IE. Minus delta H standard atomization. That one's for iodine. Next one, minus delta H standard uh, atomization for K. Just put this on the next line. Um, and this we're going with the arrow, so it's plus delta H of formation. Okay, so let's go with the maths here. We go plus 314 minus 418 minus 107 minus 90. Now we're going with the arrow, so we keep this one the same, so it's minus three, two, eight. Okay, now I need a calculator, which uh, I did not bring one with me. Bear just, with me just a second. That was a bit silly. So I found my calculator, entering all those numbers. So we start with 314. Uh, so that's the minus the um, electron affinity, minus 418. Minus 107, we're still going against the arrows there. Minus 90, and we go with this one, so it's still minus 328. So the final answer is minus 629 kilojoules per mole. Okay, fantastic. Hopefully that's given you a bit of an insight into how to not only draw, but do the calculations for Bourne Harbour cycles. Thanks very much. I'll catch you next time, guys.